Hello, 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 and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. We're looking at gold at the moment, and specifically now I want to start talking about daily cycles in gold, and we'll uh, continue talking about GDX and uh, silver in a minute. So daily cycles in gold last for, let's say, about a couple of months. This is the previous intermediate cycle in gold between August 2018 and April this year, we've seen several daily cycles, shorter term cycles within that intermediate cycle, on average lasting about, let's say, a couple of months. What's happening in gold at the moment is, I think there is a 50-50 chance that we have seen the daily cycle low recently, that was on the 1st of July. Although, if it is the case, uh, that daily cycle would uh, turn out to be a relatively unusual one because, as we see here, between November and, uh, let's say, March, even in an advancing phase of an intermediate cycle, these daily cycle lows often break below the 20-day moving average or at least retest the 20-day moving average. Additionally, what we see is on the RSI, even in an advancing phase of an intermediate cycle, again, here between November and March, these daily cycle lows bring relatively short-term RSI, that's 10-day RSI, close to oversold levels or at least down to neutral levels, as it happened here in the second half of January this year. So far, what's been happening in late June and on the 1st of July, well, we do see gold price coming much closer to the 20-day moving average, but we don't see a touch here. Whereas often these daily cycles break at least marginally below the 20-day moving average. And looking at short-term 10-day RSI, it was still close to 58. So not really neutral, which would be somewhere close to 50. And of course, very, very far from being close to oversold. So all of that just indicates that there is still a chance that gold is going to break below that recent low, which is at about 1383, and give us a true daily cycle low sometime over the next week, let's say, or a couple of weeks. In that case, this daily cycle would have some sort of a double top on the 25th of June and on the 3rd of July. However, there is also a chance that we have seen an unusual daily cycle low on the 1st of July and gold is now in a new advancing phase of a short-term daily cycle. And uh, in that case, this would not be a double top. Instead, gold would soon move above 1440. To be honest, at the moment, I'm not really sure which of the scenarios is more likely. In my opinion, they are equally likely. So I would give it a 50-50 chance that will either break below 1380 over the next week or two or break above 1440 relatively soon. And even looking at the duration of these daily cycles, which is generally about two months, anywhere between one and a half to two and a half months, counting from, let's say, this low on the 2nd of May, from the 2nd of May to the 1st of July would give us 60 candles. That's, well, that's long enough for a daily cycle. So that supports the idea that we have seen the daily cycle low and we are going to observe gold moving higher relatively soon. On the other hand, counting from this low on the 21st of May, although it's higher than the low on the 2nd of May, counting from that low only gives us 41 days for this daily cycle, which is a bit on the short side, which again just tells us that there is still this 50% chance that gold will continue being soft over the next several days. So in the short term, I think there is a 50% chance that gold is going to retest this 20-day moving average and maybe dip again slightly below 1380 down to around 1370. That would actually give us a retest of the breakout of that relatively long-term resistance zone at about, let's say, 1370. So we might retest that over the next week or two, and I would give it a 50% chance. However, in the medium term, I'm pretty confident that gold is going to blast higher. In my gold-related portfolio, I'm still all in. 
I'm not going to try to avoid this short-term low. I'm going to keep those gold-related assets, which is mostly GDX and some of the miners that I really like, as well as some uh, silver-related assets. Anyway, I'm going to hold those assets until I think we see an intermediate cycle top. Where are we going to see that top? We're going to talk about that in uh, one of the future videos. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Hit that notification bell so that you don't miss those future important videos. I do try to provide as much value as I can for you guys. So in return, if you hit that like button, that would be appreciated. And also, let me know what you think in the comments. I do enjoy learning together with you guys, as I often get really interesting questions. So back to my expectations. In the medium term, I'm pretty confident gold is going to be stronger. Although in the shorter term, we might see some volatility uh, and retest of 1370. In the medium term, I think we're going to continue with uh, intermediate advance. These intermediate cycles, as I mentioned many times, last for, let's say, around half a year. So several months for the advancing phase of that intermediate cycle. And it's only been going on so far for about a couple of months. So, so I think gold still has some fuel left within this advancing phase of an intermediate cycle. And with that in mind, let's, uh, let's have a look at GDX. All the way since the end of 2016, GDX has been capped by this resistance level at about 25 and a half. And as we see at the moment, this is a weekly chart. GDX is just about to break above that level, finally break above that resistance. And although RSI, this is a 14-week RSI, is a little bit oversold already, if that breakout happens, I think there is a really good chance of a sustained move all the way up to, let's say, 27.5 on GDX. Uh, the reason for that is because that's the next resistance level formed by that low over here at the end of July in 2016. So that's around just under 27 and a half. And if that resistance level is broken, you might say that it's wishful thinking, but I just want to see what are the upside over here. The next resistance level is basically at this top we saw in August 2016. So that's just under $32. So over the next, I would say, two to three weeks, if GDX closes confidently above that $25.5 on the weekly chart, then that would look really, really positive for GDX, despite RSI getting into oversold levels already. And there's another thing I want to show you in today's video, something very, very interesting as well, and that is silver. Here's a daily chart of silver. And what do you know? Look at what I see on the silver chart. Does that look like something familiar we saw recently on the chart of gold? Does that look like something familiar we saw recently on the chart of gold? This is a bit of a déjà vu here. So if silver does break out of this pattern, let's say over the next week or two, let's see what would be our target. The depth of this cup, let's, let's be conservative here, something like $1.1, something like that. And again, let's be conservative. If the breakout happens somewhere at this level, let's say that's 15.3. 15.3 plus $1.1 would give us something like $16.4 on silver chart, possibly sometime by uh, middle of August or second half of August. Wouldn't that be nice? As I mentioned in my personal portfolio, I do hold both gold-related as well as silver-related assets. So for now, I do really like what I see on the charts of both gold and silver. Let me know what you see on the charts in the comments below. Remember to hit that like button. Why not follow me on Twitter? That's at MyFinanceTeacher without the last letter R. Have a nice day and good luck in your trades. And a little bit of a bonus here, a few quotes about gold that I just found and I quite like them. Gold loves to make its way through guards and breaks through barriers of stone more easily than the lightning's bolt. Gold, what can it not do and undo? 
Gold gives the ugliest thing a certain charming air, for that without it were else a miserable affair. Gold opens all locks. No lock will hold against the power of gold. And uh, the one I really like the most, oh gold, I still prefer thee unto paper, which makes bank credit like a bark of vapor. Bye-bye.